Hi, this is Rebecca from Journal Tsunami, and today I'm going to talk about a resizing books that we get as templates. Uh, there's a lot of times that we get a book uh, from someone, and it's uh, a very large size, 8.5 by 11, and we'd like to make it a different size. So since I've been asked this question a few times now, I thought I would just make a video so that you can see what my process is. So when I'm making a book, I primarily will, uh, I like to buy, uh, you get an eight and a half by 11 book, but I personally like to make my books six by nine or seven by 10, only because six by nine and seven by 10 are easy for people to put in their backpacks, put in their purse and carry around with them. So the size of my book is totally 100% dictated by my niche and by who my end user is going to be. I generally don't make six by nine books for small children because their hands are too small. They're not able to really work in a very small book that's six by nine. So if I'm going to make a children's coloring book or a children's activity book, then I tend to make those eight and a half by 11. But if you buy your own books, you'll see that eight and a half by 11 is actually quite sizable and also very, very flimsy in many ways. And so it's very hard to use if it's very big. So I tend to like to make my book six by nine. Um, and so in this particular case, uh, this is a template for Tarot uh, journals. It's a very pretty template and it just has uh, two repeating pages. So the very first step that I'm going to take before I do anything to resize my book is I'm going to go up to file and make changes. Now before I go forward I wanted to say I'm on a Mac so a couple of things, very few things are in different places than they are if you're using a PC. Obviously, if you're using a PC, the file area is up here on inside of the document, it's inside of the program itself, and on a Mac, it's up here on the toolbar. But it's basically in the same place. Just imagine if your toolbar looked like that in your PowerPoint, then it's pretty much in the same space. And all the other aspects to using this tool are the same. So the slide sorters down here and all my other shortcut tools are down on the bottom. If you're using PowerPoint 2016 and newer, so even uh, PowerPoint 365. If you're using an older version of PowerPoint, I don't know what those ribbons look like. So uh, you may need to find out by going and typing in whatever version of PowerPoint you have if you have older versions. But that said, the file area is still pretty much in the same area up here in the upper uh, left hand corner of the software and you go and you click on save as and then when you do a save as it'll take you to whatever file folder you're going to save your document in. Then when I want to save my document, I'm going to save it and I will type the size in that I want to save it as. So in this case, six by nine, and this happens to be color at this time. When I change it to black and white, I will notate that I'm changing it to black and white. So all of those different things help you know what your files are about in a month or three months from now when you go back and maybe want to repurpose one of your documents. Now I'm going to click cancel only because I've already made this smaller document, but you would go save and then continue. So I have my six by nine document. Now mind you, I've only changed the name of the document. I haven't changed the size yet. Before I do anything about changing my size, I'm going to go to the slide sorter, which is the four boxes down here, and I'm going to go and I'll see all the slides that are in this. You have this little slider down here, which helps you adjust the size of what you're looking at. And then I'm going to decide, this is Dropbox right there. I'm going to decide what repeats in this document. Now in this particular document, 
I am not going to use these first three pages. I might use this one because it's the copyright page, so I'll just swap that out and use that. But I'm not, I'm not going to use the image that's on these pages because I'm going to make it unique to myself. Um, so I can decide to leave it there or not leave it there. It's not important um, if I delete them. But what is important is to take a look at what the repeating pages are. And in this case, this entire 183 page document is all the exact same two pages. It's this page and this page repeated throughout the same thing. So it's important to look in the slide sorter because some templates that you get may have multiple repeating pages. They may have pages that you don't want to use in your particular version of uh, whatever it is you're going to make. There's lots of times when I take out the pages and I don't want them um, or I'll move and rearrange them in different orders. It all depends on what I want the outcome to be for my template. So in the slide sorter is where you can obviously move things around at your heart's content. But in this particular case, if I'd identified that there were four pages that repeated, then I'd keep these four pages. But in this case, there's only two pages that repeat and all the rest of these are unnecessary for me to have to deal with. And you'll see why I want to get rid of these in a minute. So I delete them all because they're just re repetitions of the exact same page. And I also may not want my book to be the same size, right? So I now have this one page. I'm going to go back to the main view, to the slide view. I'll just keep these pages because I'll just swap out the images later. I can delete those images right now if I want to because I'm not going to use them. And now I'm here and here. So we want to look at the fact that I have this text there and all the rest are just lines in this image, which I also can get rid of because I'm not going to use it. I have this image here and I can get rid of that. Actually, I guess I'll just keep that as a placeholder for right now. But I have all of this text here and this text in these boxes right here. So this is why it's important to get rid of all those other pages because when I resize this document, I may need to come through and resize the text here, okay? Because the text is not going to change the font size. So the font size of these right now is 12. And when I change the size of my document, this will change minimally, and so some of them may not fit. So hang on. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go to Design. So it's on your top toolbar. I'm going to click on Slide Size. Go to Page Setup. And I'm going to make it 6 by 9. And if I was going to make this bleed, obviously it would be 6.125 and 9.25. But I'm not making this bleed at this point in time, so I'm just going to make it 6 by 9. The inches will populate by itself. And I'm going to say scale because I want it to scale down. You'll notice that when I scale it, it maintains my margins. Now she has gutter space here. I don't really need the gutter space myself. Um, and she has the, the margins all move according to the way that they should. I have all of these lines here. But what you see happen here is that this particular line right here needs to be adjusted. Now, if I had kept all 183 pages, which is the mistake I see some people make, then they go through and they're going like, oh, this is such a pain in the neck because I have to redo all these pages. Well, you don't really have to because this is the page that was in the 183 pages. So I only have to fix one of them. And then I'll go and I'll look at this page here. 
And now at this point, this also needs to be adjusted. And this line here needs to be adjusted. And I'll come back and I'll probably redo this page anyway, so that's not a big deal. And then this obviously will be not be the title that I have on my book, so that will be changed, so that doesn't matter. So now the next step I want to take in my design is I'm going before I do anything, is all of these are Calibre. And so I want to go up to Format, Replace Fonts. Now, in Windows, the Format bar is over here under Edit. So that's just something that you need to know. It's slightly different. But they both have a Format and they have Replace Fonts. And the fonts here are Calibre and Calibre Light. I don't think, I think all of these are Calibre. I don't think that there's any. Okay, so let's just see what happens. I'm not sure which ones would be Calibre Light. So if I highlight this one right here, like that, and then I go up to Format, Replace Fonts, Go to Calibre, and I'm going to replace it with, um, let's try this one and see what it looks like. Oh, I don't like that at all. Let's try that one. That one's prettier, isn't it? Still a little bit hard, but it is kind of fancy pants. And probably very readable if I go in and I update that. So I think I'm going to keep that. And then it's just a matter of me coming through and I'm going to highlight all of these. See how I'm holding down my shift key and I'm, highlight I'm highlighting them all holding down my shift key and clicking on the spaces that I want. And then I'm going to click on and make them all 10. And they updated every single one of them on that page, right? Now I just need to go in and adjust the few that I need to adjust. So this one here standard meaning that word there this one here pull that there like that and then on this page there like that make this one at 10 and so now I have them I think that's very pretty I might make these a little bit more bold See what happens when I make them bold. Now it doesn't make them more readable. So I still can go in and I can change this font if I want to. That would be a choice that I want to make as I'm going through and playing with it. But you'll see I haven't really done anything with my entire book. I'm still just playing with these two pages. So now if this is the book that I decided that I want, then all I have to do is go back to slide view, hold down my shift key, click on that one, go um, control or command D, which duplicates, And then I can make all those pages all over again and have a 183 page document one more time. Now personally for me, because I'm making this book myself, I'm going to make this slightly different than what's here, but I just wanted you to see and understand what I go through when I'm resizing a document 
and that it really doesn't have to be that hard, okay? Uh, and in this case here, if I wanted to move the entire thing over, the only thing that I really want to move so that it meets these lines is these boxes right here because she had her gutter in a different place than I have my gutter. And so I have adjusted this book to what I want it to be. So hopefully you've seen just how easy it is to resize a book. The most important step is, is to go into the slide sorter, get rid of all the repeating pages, only focus on the two or three or four pages that repeat throughout the document, and then make the change. Now I will have one caveat here for you. Obviously, if you are working on a planner that is dated, then this doesn't work for you because a dated planner every single page is important because it's dated throughout the year. So in that particular case, it would be exceedingly tedious to have to change a 365-page document and change the size uh, because you probably have to alter every single page. So in that particular case, I would either try to make sure I'm buying a template that's already sized correctly for me so I don't have to deal with that. So there's just sometimes you're going to have to say, I can't really make those changes. Or you can also go to the person who made the template and ask them if they would do that for you. Though there may be a reason why they didn't make it that size. But if they get enough people asking for a different size, then they may be willing to consider altering or making another template uh, to give to the people that purchased. I've seen it happen. It happens all the time. Sometimes it's just asking and then you'll receive it. So hopefully this has been very helpful for you and gives you a lot more leeway in being able to see how you too can create these journals so that they work for you. Have a great day. Thanks again. Talk to you later.